Yes, YouTube. So today is a very wintry December's day leading up to Christmas. It's all very exciting though because I have something to show you all and explain to you all. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen yesterday's post, which was that I bought a new car. So today's YouTube video is going to be 100% entirely about the new car I've bought. And if you haven't seen it, this is what it is. Yeah. It is a C63 AMG, which is a Mercedes. Um, I did make a video a little while ago actually about my BMW 335D, which is like the estate diesel wagon that's good on fuel, really fast. I said it's the perfect mountain bike car. And I wasn't lying, I haven't bought a car to dispute that fact. What I've done is I've bought a car that I've always been a massive, massive fan of and I feel super lucky that I get the support of all you guys, all my sponsors, the events I go to, which give me an opportunity to buy amazing things like this. But I've always absolutely loved these cars. So I'm going to give like a completely in-depth tour around it. I've owned it now for two weeks. I bought it the day before I went to Whistler on that skiing holiday. So now I've been back, I've kind of given it a couple of days just to drive it loads. I've probably done about six, 700 miles on it already, which isn't ideal because the thing needs a petrol station all the time. It's so bad on fuel, and but so powerful so far. So I kind of like have a really good understanding of what I want to talk about the car now, which is helpful. So I'm going to kind of just, yeah, explain to you guys my thoughts on it, why I'm so excited to have it, why I chose it, etc. So I'll spin the camera around now and we'll have a little look. So. A C63 AMG, what is that? Well, it's a Mercedes C-Class. This one's actually a 2012 plate, but I've put a custom plate on it, which I'll talk about later. Um, even though it says C63 on the badge, it's actually, it's actually a 6.2 litre V8 engine that's naturally aspirated. So it hasn't got a turbo, it hasn't got a supercharger, it's just a massive V8 lump. And I'll lift the bonnet in a bit and look at the engine because it's absolutely massive. So, it's a two-door coupe, which isn't ideal for bikes, but because it's got such a big glass boot that, like back there and even glass, the whole roof's glass, it means I'm going to be able to get one of those sucker suction cup um, bike racks, which is going to look so sick with a bike on the top. Um, it's got this nice little carbon fibre spoiler here and various little things. Um, the main features for me that stand out are the four insane quad exhaust pipes. They're going to be really hot right now because I've been driving it loads. But that, those exhaust pipes is where the pure sound of thunder and hell come from when you're wide open. So that's kind of one of the absolute main things about this car which stand out for me is the unreal noise it makes. Story about the number plate. So I've actually had that for over a year. My girlfriend got it for me as like a surprise birthday present, which is so cool because I was always looking around online for custom, like private number plates, private registrations, and I found that one and thought it was really cool because I figured you can make it say evil as, as it does. And then I went to buy it and it wasn't online anymore and I was so upset and I remember saying to my girlfriend like, oh, it's gone, I can't believe it's gone, someone's bought it. And then my birthday came around and it turns out the person who bought it was her, so that was really cool. So I think, as well as it being a really loud, insanely fast, powerful V8 lump, the number plate just makes the whole thing look so much more fierce. Um, what else can we talk about? So this one specifically is the performance pack, which means it's got uprated brakes with these big red brake calipers, so the brakes are more powerful. A few little bits of carbon fibre. They're, some of the internals under the bonnet are from the SLS, so they're like forged internals which can take more power if you want to make it into a bit of a project. And that is something I'm kind of thinking about. Like stock, this car is unbelievable. Like. It's, they're really famous these, it's going to be the last ever of the big engine naturally aspirated V8 cars. Cars are all going down now, being turbocharged, smaller engines. So to have a 6.2 litre engine, that's not going to probably happen ever again for Mercedes. But, despite all that, you can do a lot of work to these. And I'm thinking maybe like they, this could become a project, like I could slowly come up with ideas of how to tune it. What so much, but if you, if you know about cars, please feel free to tell me what I could do with this. But Right now, I'm so happy with it, but we'll carry on looking around the beast. So, up front, it look, could look like just a normal C-Class, but there's such little subtle details that make this one look more fierce and stand out. So on the bonnet, you've got these sort of humps, which you can see in there. And when you're driving it, they actually look insane. Like, they're almost hard to see over. You're sat quite low. And then the wheel arches here on the AMG one are slightly wider. So the front end of the car looks the absolute business. I think it looks unreal. Um, down the side here as well, you've got 
where it says 6.3 so it's always it's little subtle things with this i think this car is definitely a, a wolf in sheep's clothing like you'd look you think oh there's a mercedes and then you'd look again when thunder comes out the exhaust and you'd be like oh my god that thing's unreal so i'm really happy with that like you can get if you have a ferrari everyone sees a ferrari come in you know what it did you know the deal whereas this one like you could kind of sneak into a bit of a race and then destroy and wipe the floor right if we go around the other side of the car we'll have a quick look at the interior because it's actually quite it's quite like an understated businessman's car at the end of the day like it's such a balance of german quality with like insane power and when you're sat inside you just feel so comfortable but also locked into like a racing car it's kind of a weird experience it's not like you're sat in a rattly go-kart track car so if we have a look inside i'll just flip the camera around again so it's the two door so the doors are super long on it which i was quite surprised about it's quite hard to get out with small parking spaces but with the performance pack you get this like alcantara trim on the steering wheel and all the inside stuff looks really sick um, the seats as well look at how rad the bolsters are here and when you're sat into it i'm going to get in now actually oh. when you're sat inside like these bolsters just hug you so much and you just feel absolutely planted in here and it's such a good feeling um what else we got to talk about and get excited about so the steering wheel's got these flappy paddles so when you're doing downshifts and stuff it sounds like a bomb's gone off and then down here you've got different modes to drive in so comfort sport sport plus and manual so when you put it in manual you can like redline in gears and have complete control and then sport plus is automatic even though it's automatic it's just choosing all the right gears to be up high in the rev range and like get the most power out of the engine and it's also got launch control called race start so i've only done one of them so far i don't know how good it is for the car to do all the time but even with wet roads it's just the absolute business setting that thing off um the only thing is it's a two-door right so it's probably worth me walking around the back of the car and just showing you the situation right now so as i don't have a roof rack this is the deal this is what i have to deal with very 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 minimal bike space it's far from ideal i've literally taken both wheels off and it's almost doesn't fit so the roof rack is going to have to come really soon if i'm going to use this for riding but i've still got a van and that's something that i'm passionate about having like this is a really smart posh car which i want to keep nice and then the absolute workhorse is going to be the van and i'm trying to figure out actually maybe a bigger van for the winter so i can do things like motocross throw my pit bike in more so i'm speaking to some people about a good van to get so watch this space but this one for riding it's going to need a roof rack like i'm not going to put my bike in luckily my bike's clean from a corby session last night but there's no way it's going in the back of here when it's muddy um i said i'd pop the bonnet so we'll look at the engine and um then i guess i'll set the tripod up and rev the absolute tits off this thing so you can hear how unreal it sounds let's have a look at this german v8 lump then if i can figure out how to open this thing there we go right there she is and all of these amg engines are hand built so whether it's a c-class an e-class an sls the v8 or the whatever german hand-built amg engines all come with a signature from the guy who built it so this one's joschen jetterhorn or something like that don't hold me to that pronunciation but he whoever that guy is has built this entire engine by hand and i've actually seen a video of them doing it and it's you can tell they do it every single day as a job because they're just the speed they could put these things together and it's so sick but having a hand-built engine kind of gives you that real cool reassurance that the engine's just gonna last forever and be good to you and that's really important this car makes 485 horsepower right now i think which is a load of power and it's also got loads of torque so it's really fast all through the rear wheels um i'd be lying if i said it wasn't insanely dangerous but and buying one in winter isn't the most intelligent decision like i realized i should have probably waited till summer but i've always wanted this performance pack model and one came up that was a good deal and i had to kind of jump at it to be honest but the wet roads haven't been ideal i haven't really had a chance to completely go for it and even despite that on a whole tank of fuel i averaged about 18 miles to the gallon at the best so it's so bad on fuel um but like from that angle it just looks so cool and i'm going to do the nice thing to you all now make you all really really happy and set the camera up and rev the car so you can see how cool the engine sounds right i'm going to put it here right let's do it It 
sounds absolutely insane. But I'm not going to do that all the time. I'm not going to be a guy that sits in car parks revving my car next to McDonald's. But I just wanted to show you what the V8 sounds like and why it's just my favourite engine in the whole world. So, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was all about my car and I just want to kind of share that with you and make you understand why I love this car, why I chose it and that I really appreciate all you guys support and that's the main thing so if you enjoyed today's video that's amazing give me a thumbs up if you did comment any ideas for this if you think put the bike on the roof or you got another method of maybe moving my bike around don't just say get a van I'm thinking about that it's on the cards we've all sorted about that so yeah give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video comment away you're all absolute legends if you subscribe you're an even bigger legend I love making YouTube videos thank you so much guys and yeah if you want to subscribe click here See you in the next video. I'm at Brink Bike Shop now. I'm about to get my dirt jump bike all tuned up. So keep an eye out for that and see you in more videos to come. Legends.